witnesses that must be able to address as a people or as a government so that we can be able to provide uh, good services to our people by working together because we have got the same objective. The members of the press have got a target audience that they must be able to provide with content, with information. But at government, we have the information, but we don't have the voice to reach the targeted audience, which is the same for both of us. And therefore, that collaboration is key so that we can be able to satisfy the needs of the same target audience that we have. So I want to again thank you for that collaboration, which has been very, very good over the years. Now for today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have invited you to talk about a very, very important event that is ahead of us, that general elections, and the conduct and responsibility of our people. This is Kenyan society. And, and today, we're indeed privileged to have with us uh, the National Police Service spokesperson, Mana Bruno, who is uh, well known to you. He'll be telling us a little bit about uh, what uh, the National Police Service is doing or uh, plans to do to ensure that uh, we cross that bridge to Kwasoto Salama. We also have uh, Madame Olive, who is a communications person, Olive Metet from uh, NCIC, uh, who is also here as a communication person. And, you know, we were also expecting to get um, a representative from the IBC, but for reasons uh, that were beyond their control, they were not able to join with us. But in the future, they will be able to join with us so that we can all together, you know, um, converse and discuss issues that are important to us, even as we head to general elections uh, as a people and as, as people who are united towards one common goal. But ladies and gentlemen, like I've already said, you know, we are aware that the elections are only a few months away. Come 9th August, Kenyans will be pre presented with this democratic moment to choose the leaders and the government that they want. Such a moment comes only five, you know, every five years. It is a moment in the past, it's a moment that in the past had been filled with anxiety, enthusiasm, panic for others, and even a violence in some places. All the way from 1992, 1997, 2007, 2013, and even 2017, we have had to contend with electoral related violence, hate speech, and other forms of intolerance. Tension and violence experienced most times at a pro as a product of incitement by leaders, and in some cases, the media. Judging by that past and common knowledge, such outcomes have come to define our elections. But collectively, we are saying, never again. Recognizing this reality and considering that Kenyans are the series of peace during elections, relevant government departments and agencies have come together in a multi-agency setting to synergize in preparation and response to issues that may arise before, during, and possibly after elections in order to ensure a stable political situation that inspires confidence among our people prevails. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, political contest is a democratic activity that is provided for in our constitution and it is a democratic right for every Kenyan to participate. Participation here implies one presenting himself or herself to the electorate for any seat and in any part of the country. Kenyans are free to vie for any seat within the Republic of Kenya, and they are also free to campaign and sell their policies and agenda anywhere but within the law. Spe specifically, our Constitution 2010 grants all Kenyan citizens the freedom of speech. This freedom, however, has been misconstrued by others very few though, to be freedom to spread hate, freedom to intimidate others, freedom to abuse, and, and freedom to make unprintable remarks. It is rather unfortunate that some of these insightful statements are made by none other than some of our leaders with little care to the impact of their utterances, more on the youth who look up to them for mentorship, for guidance, 
for the election. It is important to remind our leaders that they are expected to inspire, to encourage and to build courage and resilience, not to build an environment of fear, panic, and certainty within the society. We must all aspire to be responsible citizens, and it is demanded of us all to be mindful of others even as we enjoy our constitutionally guaranteed rights and freedoms. This is expected even more from a leader. Therefore, all called upon to shun hate speech and other forms of intolerance, particularly the youth who are advised to act responsibly and to avoid being used for selfish gains by politicians. By doing so, we shall preserve critical bonds that hold our society together and create an environment to facilitate more development. We are also aware that the media is equally critical in any democratic process. Used badly, it can be a divisive tool. Examples are many where the media has been deployed badly with grave consequences. We therefore urge members of the fourth estate, estate to exercise their freedom of the, press respons of, of the press responsibly. Reporting should not be skewed in any manner that can lead to polarization. So we are asking the media to be very, very nonpartisan. We are also aware about how the internet, for instance, and other digital spaces have expanded capacities and opportunities for communication. This has inadvertently also extended the capacities and possibilities for hate speech and other forms of intolerance. Our appeal is for Kenyans to use the power of technology to promote tolerance and spread messages of peace, cohesion, and national unity. As government, we take this opportunity to urge for calmness, sobriety, and civility in the way we carry ourselves, even as we exercise our constitutionally guaranteed civil rights uh, and civil and political rights. Let us not allow divisive politics and rhetoric to threaten our hard-fought economic and democratic gains. Elections come and go, but our country shall rem always remain. Let us protect it for the next generation. Let us also remind ourselves that peace and, and stability of our motherland, Kenya, is a responsibility bestowed upon us upon the shoulders of each and every one of us, with the overarching motivation being to control what we can before trying to control what we cannot. To further amplify our resolve to holding peaceful and credible elections, we are pleased today to host uh, the representatives uh, from uh, different aspects uh, that manage, or, you know, agencies that manage different aspects of elections. NCSC, for instance, is charged the responsibility to facilitate peaceful coexistence among its different communities. As we head into elections, NCIC is advocating for violence-free elections with the motto Elections Villa, Villa Norma. Let us not allow divisive rhetoric to threaten our hard-fought economic gains. I think I'm going to repeat. I'm sorry about that. NCSC continue to investigate incidences of hate speech. As of now, 51 cases are under in different stages of investigation. These cases are from April last year to date. It's also important for Kenyans to understand that the NCSC has been carrying out campaigns to ensure that there is you know, a free and fair election, that the, every Kenyan is aware about what they are supposed to be doing as we head into elections. So it's also been collaborating with various stakeholders, including the National Police Service, uh, Office of the Registrar of Political Parties, Office of the DPP, and uh, we are on a platform for peace. That has been going on. They have also been carrying out engagement at the community level so that uh, Kenyans can be aware about what is expected of them even as we head into the elections. What happens many times is that uh, these leaders who make hate speech, they do that because sometimes we encourage them as electorate to do that. We motivate them, we clap for them, and sometimes even look up to such statements. And we are saying that if we, the electorate, can be able to uh, shout them out, can be able to tell them not to uh, encourage in such kind of utterances, certainly they're going to stop. 
we are also asking Kenyans to really to take up this responsibility and tell these leaders to stop because as a society we must remain united. We have, like I said earlier on, elections come and go but Kenya remains. It is important also for Kenyans to understand that this is a collective responsibility and must be we must all be ready to tell leaders who are out to cause division, division in the country. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll come back a little later. It's now my pleasure to invite Mr. Bruno Siosi from the National Police Service, the police person, spokesperson, to say a few remarks before I come back with uh, other uh, remarks. Karibu Bruno Siosi.